Jesus' name we pray. Our Lord Almighty, your children have come before you to eat the food of life. Yes, to obey you is simple. If somebody desires to obey you, because your word comes with grace. The person that wants to obey your word is given the grace to do so. Lord divine, let there be hunger and thirst in the lives of your children everywhere that are listening to you now. That they will receive your word and practice the obedience of it. So that their Christianity should show forth, should shine as the light. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Godliness in the family of Christ's disciples. Godliness in the family of Christ's disciples. The word of God on godliness comes to us in a series of messages. We listen to the godliness of the man Jesus Christ. The godliness of Christ's ministers, I mean Christ's disciples. The, three, the third one, the godliness of Christ's ministers. Number four, the godly dressing and adornment of Christ's followers. And uh, today, godliness in the family of Christ's disciples. If you are a child of God that has married man or woman, the Lord expects godliness from you. You are not to follow the customs of men, traditions of men, philosophies of men in your marital affair. But to follow the principles of God so that you can have the best of marriage. Godliness must enter with you into the marriage. Godliness. You must express it there before your wife. Show her you are a believer. Demonstrate love for God. For her. Demonstrate for the things of God. Let her know. My holy man. It's a righteous man. Similarly, you woman. You intermarry with godliness, righteousness, truth, which requires the submission. It requires a total surrender. Yes, to obedience to God and to the man that is your head, that is your leader. You are doing so as a Christian, as Christ disciple, Christ follower. The women in the world are decaying. Now, there is competition in the house between the husband and the wife who is greater, who is actually the leader. That should not be in the house of the children of God. In the house of Christ's disciples. Where the woman is of Christ. So, 
I want to talk about the headship in the home, in the family. Headship in the home, headship in the family. By headship, I mean who is leading, who is on top, who is the overseer of the home, who is the pastor over the home. Who is the command? First Corinthians from verse To verse 5. The hate of the woman. Is the man. And the hate of Christ is God. How many is hate covered? But every desire which I hate on covered dishonored her hate. But that is even all one as if she were shivered. Now, we are told three headship here. Three heads. Number one, the head of the Trinity. The Father is the head of the Trinity. The Father, the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Though they are one in equality, but here we see in redemption story. In redemption design, the Father is the head of Christ. When Jesus came to the world, he demonstrated very clearly that the Father was his head. The Father was the authority that sent him he showed it clearly. The leader of the Godhead, but it's one person anyway. But it's one person with a leading person. We see it in the book of John chapter 14, verse 28. Headship discovered to us because of redemption. Someone has to be the leader that commands actions to be done. Others are the followers. Although, as we know, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one person. Now, John chapter 14, verse 28. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. For purpose of redemption, he is greater than I. Because he sent me to the world. I am here to do his own will. I have put up my equality with God. In the book of Philippians, 
chapter 2, verse 5 to verse 9. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of new, no reputation, and took upon him the form of his servant, and was made in the likeness of man. Can you see that? Being in the form of God, one with God, but lay aside the God rank, which he had with the Father from the beginning, and took upon himself the form of a servant and became obedient. I want you to see this. Something has to be put away to achieve something. The form of God. The authority he has himself as God. He laid it aside. Why? He had become man. He had become a servant. He was subject unto the Father. And being subject unto the Father, can you see some utterances of his life? John chapter 15. John. Chapter 15, he says in verse 10, let's read from verse 9. As the Father hath loved me, so have I also loved you. Continue ye in my love. The Father loved me. Continue. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. Can you see? There's a reason why the father loves me. I keep his commandment. He's my head. He's my leader. He's my overseer. He's my captain. He's my director. I receive good care of the father. Because I keep his commandment. He continued. Yeah. Verse 14. Henceforth, I call you not servant, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I've called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father. I have made known unto you. Is it not God to have Spoken of himself, he rather said, I heard from my father. I listen to my father. I receive from my father. I am doing all you see me do by my father. Can you see subjection to authority? He laid aside the God put in himself. And now that position has brought him as a man, he shot it actually in love, in character. In chapter, chapter 5 of John, John chapter 5, verse 37, And the Father himself, which had sent me, had borne witness of me, for ye have neither had his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. He bore witness. The Father sent me. The greater sends the lesser. The Father sent me. And he said, in verse 38, and ye have not his word abiding in you for whom he hath sent 
him ye believe not. You don't have his word in you. Otherwise, he sent me. But you're not receiving me. He authorized me. But you're not accepting my authority. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. And there are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men. But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name. And ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, ye will receive him. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? I came in my father's name, in my father's authority. That's why I told you, they baptized them in the name of Jesus. Meaning, they baptized them in the authority of Jesus. Jesus is saying here, I came in my father's name. That is to say, he sent me. I am doing all this thing in his authority. In obedience to him. I'm not doing them in my name. The, baptize, the disciples were not baptizing in their name. No. In the name of Jesus, the one that authorized them to preach. Because he had given them authority, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In the authority of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And now the disciples went really to preach as authorized by Jesus. And their baptism was not in their own name, not in their own authority. But in the name of Jesus, by the authority of Jesus. Who authorized them? So, I came in my father's name. But you people are not receiving me. Yeah. I seek not my honor, but the honor of my father. I'm speaking the language of submission. That this language be transferred to the woman at home. That this language of Jesus this character of Jesus be transferred because Jesus is under authority as the woman also is under authority. And Jesus is speaking how he behaved under the head over him. So see him now. I have the father as my head. Therefore, this is how I behave towards him. Since I found myself in a position lower than my father, and he is now still on the throne as God, this is what I do. And this is the character of a person who is under authority. You're, you seek the glory of that person. You listen to that person. You don't do things in your own authority. You don't do things in, your, things in your own power because there's a hate over you. You hear him and you declare to other people, to the children, to the people in the household, to the people in the neighborhood, to the people everywhere. You hear from your husband. See Jesus as I heard from the Father. As I hear from the Father. As you, I hear from the and in John chapter 16, for chapter 14 rather, John chapter 14, verse 6, verse 7, it goes, If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth ye knew him and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, 
Show us the Father, and it sufficed us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me? Philip, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very works sake. Can you see him? Here, he spoke about equality with the Father, oneness with the Father, but he came again. I am lower for this for the sake that I became man. Otherwise, there's no difference between me and the Father. No confusion. Yeah, you are one with your husband, but still make God to show people he is the head. Jesus showed to people, God the Father is his head. So you see it very clear here. The Father is the head of Jesus Christ. And we also see the headship of Christ over the man. The headship of Christ over the man. In the same First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Verse 3, he said, But I would have you know that the hate of every man is Christ. Can man behave so now to Christ? Yes, yeah, this is what it means. As Christ did to the Father, I am not here to show my own glory. I am not here to show my own prowess, my power, my wisdom, my own. Never. I am here as a saint man. I am here not to show in the family, not to show any kind of person that I am somebody you must tremble your mouth slavely, slavishly, fear. No. No. I am here as one that the Lord has recognized and given the headship. In Acts of Apostles, chapter 10. Acts of Apostles, chapter 10. I read verse 25. It was 29. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up! I myself also, I am a man. So, the man is not to take worship in the home. The man is not to treat the Members of the family, the wife and the children, the occupants, as though they were slaves. The man must be careful that he maintains manliness, manhood in the family. That your wife does not become a slave, trembling at you. Why? Your children do not become slaves. Trembling at your voice. Why? Ma, Christ is your head. Why should people be bowing and worshiping? Not that they should not bow in respect. But this man now, the bowing has gone from respect to worship. You must resist it. Why are you a dread to the family? Why are you a dread to your wife? Why can he not, she not talk with you, relate with you, even reprove you for what you did wrongly? 
Why will you not accept it? Are you not a man? Are you not a man? Have you become God? Because God set you over the woman, you become God? No. Peter took him up, saying, Stand up! I myself also I am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were, came, were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is not it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or place. It's because of God I came. Therefore came I unto you without gain saying, as soon as you were, I, I was sent for, I asked therefore, what intent have you sent for me? God, I am a man like you. It's God that told me that I should not count you people as culture, tall as the Jew. I should not count you people infidel, unclean, lower being. No, don't do that. God told me not to do that. So God has told you, husband. Don't treat your wife according to the customs of men. Don't treat your wife according to the traditions of your tribe. Don't follow natural men in treating your wife. God has told you she is of respect. She is of honor. Yes, though under your headship, though under your headship. So, the hate of the man is cry. Fully submit to cry. As soon as you sent for me, I came because the Lord asked me to go. That is why. I have come. Else I wouldn't have come. Then I don't have anything of my own to do. It is what I see from the Lord. It's what I hear from the Lord. Whatever I do is not of my own authority. I must ask the Lord how to do it. So I do it by the Lord. Let the husband therefore be totally subject in the family. Christ is your head. Is the head of the family. There is a portrait in some family. Christ is the head of this house, of this home. The silent listener to all conversation. So, always remember, Jesus is your head. And will therefore not be pleased with you if you take action that he does not want. If you make demand that he does not want. He will not be happy with you. The children of Israel complained over Solomon after he had died that he made their service grievous. Oh, he backslid in Christ, in the Lord. Solomon backslid. Solomon went after beauty and glory and was taxing it over people. He was no more looking to God to guide his way. He was going after the desire of his heart. He said, whatever my heart desired, I got it. But people have to suffer for it. So when the husband is backsliding, the family will suffer. The wife will suffer. The children will suffer. Because he's no more in connection with God and does not receive instruction from him. He's no more receiving instruction from God. Otherwise, receive your instructions from God. What you're bringing into the family is what Jesus allowed. The rules you're bringing into the family is what Jesus has instructed you. 
It's what Jesus has counseled you. Do that. It shows you're under the headship of Christ. Yeah. Again, the head, headship of the husband over the wife. Back again to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the hate of every man is Christ, and the hate of the woman is the man, and the hate of Christ is God. The hate of the woman is, Christ, is the man. Can you see? As Christ does to the father, so the man, the husband, does to Christ. So the woman, the wife, does to the man. That is the order. That is the order. Has Christ disobeyed the Father? He said, I do always those things that please him. So does my Father love me because I do always those things that please him. You want to enjoy marriage in the house, woman? Do always those things that please your husband. Do always those things. Jesus said, so my father loved me because I keep his commandment. So woman, keep the commandment of your husband. The instruction of your husband. I seek not my glory, but the glory of him that sent me. Yes, woman, Seek not your glory in that family. Seek the glory of your husband. Him that sent me. Him that married me. Don't seek your recognition. Seek the recognition of your, father, of your husband. Don't testify of you, of yourself. Testify. Let the people know of your husband. Then means you are honoring headship. You are submitting to headship. That's what God expects of you. Yeah. But then, this scripture tells us there can be disobedience to headship. There can be disobedience to headship. That's four. Of First Corinthians chapter 11. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonored his head. Who is his head? Christ is his head. There can be dishonor to Christ by man. Ah, the testimony abound. The testimony abound. The accounts of disobedience to Christ abound of many men. They don't obey him. Here it is in the physical sense. If the man is praying, is in the church for worship, and covers his head with a cap, with a piece of cloth, it means he is saying, I am not under Christ. I'm not submitting to him. I cover him. I cover the presence of Christ. I cover the glory of Christ. I cover the authority of Christ in this place. It's me that remains. That's what it means by implication. When a man in the church covers his head with cup, with cloth. It means you have covered Jesus, your head. He should not be seen. It's like some people are coming and you cover something in your room that they should not see. They should not see something like See it. That's exactly what you did to Christ. Christ. You covered him. By that physical thing you put on your head. And people do that. Then in the spiritual, they dishonor Christ. 
They reject the glory of God. When your own desires supersede that of Christ in the home, you have dishonored Christ. When what you demand your wife to do for you is against what Christ will need, it means you despise Christ for asking her to go beyond righteousness, to go to the realm of evil. You have covered Christ. You are now saying, I am the one here. When you ask your children, send them to do something that is evil, that Christ would not allow. You have said, children, keep quiet. I am the one here. You are not under Christ. You have dishonored your head. But as for Christ, he never disobeyed his father. He never disobeyed his father. He never spoke or took any, took any action that will bring contempt to the father. He never taught us to disobey the father. Even when somebody came to him and said, good master, good teacher. He said, who is good but God alone? Give honor to the father. Recognize the father. Recognize him. So, you see how he honored the father? But where are you dishonoring him? When he comes to you to give him honor as a husband, you're not giving him honor. Your family doesn't see his presence. Prayer is not offered in your house to him. Devotion is not going on in your house to him. Worship is not going on in your house to him. Which way do you honor him? Rather, fight, shout, canal authority, busting, cursing, and all. Do you? Then you have dishonored Christ. You have rejected his presence. You have rejected his righteousness. How would it have been? Suppose Christ disobeyed his father. His father would have not loved him. If he had disobeyed his father. How would it have been. If Christ never did that. Which pleased the father. He would have not received a welcome by him. In the natural sense. Then how is it now to you. That you do not respect Christ. Man in that marriage. In that home. In your relationship with your wife. By demanding things. That you know clearly, Jesus will not accept your demand. By demanding such an obedience, that Jesus will not like it. You are asking your wife to lick you, where you should not be licked. You are helping the wife, wife open. I want to lick you, where you should not be licked. You should not lick. Is that not disobedience to authority of Christ, to the righteousness of Christ? You are performing some acts with your wife. Which thing you should not do in the, in the sanity, sanity of Christ. In the purity of Christ. You are speaking words. Which things you should not speak. Are you not dishonoring Christ? Now that you dishonor Christ, what are you expecting now? Definitely he will not accept you. Definitely he will turn away from you. Definitely he will not regard you. So, but then women also disobey, dishonor their head. Look at it in that verse 4, verse 5. But every woman that prayed or prophesied with her head uncovered, dishonored her head. For that is even as, that is even all one as if she were shaven. Every woman that prayed or prophesied with her head covered, dishonored her head. What does that mean? You are dishonoring man. You are dishonoring man. Because the word says, let's take that scripture again. But every woman that prayed or prophesied with her head Uncovered. That's what I want to say. With her head 
uncover, dishonor at her head. For that is even all one, as if she were shaven. Her head is not covered. Man is honored before God. When the woman covers her head, which is man in the presence of God, don't bring that man into danger before God. Why are you showing as if man is in competition with God? You want to shame him? You want to expose him? By leaving your head uncovered, you are supposed to cover man. Why? The Bible says you are the glory of man. Yeah. You look at verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. In the presence of God, cover the glory of man. You are not ready to do that. You are dishonoring the man. You are, not, you are not respecting the man. Yes. You are, you are showing that you are rebelling. When must I cover my head? When man is not covering his own. You see how you are treating man? Man is not covering his own because the Lord told him, he should leave it open. Why? Wow. Jesus is in the open assembly. Jesus is involved in the prayer. Why are you competing with man, woman? Why are you struggling with man? You want to leave your head uncovered too? Because you want to show that you are equal with man, you are not lower than him. That's a disrespect. And that is the matter. The problem at home is there is a competition between the woman and the, mo and the man. You leave your head uncovered. I also will leave my head uncovered. We are the same here. That's disrespect. That's competition. That's fleshly. That's despise. You don't want to agree that man is greater than you. Jesus agreed openly, written in scripture, my father is greater than I. Man agreed clearly and said, I am also a man. Don't give the glory of Jesus to me. Why are you trying to compete with man that you will not give him glory? Because you are the glory of man. When you cover your head, you give glory to man. You say no. God gave man a privilege above you. You say no. Why must he be above me? Why? When you challenge man, who was so authorized by God, your challenge goes in chain to Jesus. And to the Father. He that receives you, receives me. He that receives me, receives the Father that sent me. Can you see the chain? He that despises you, despises me. He that despises me, despises the Father that sent me. Now that you are stubborn to the man, you will not submit. You are equal. You are struggling with equality. You will not bow. You are dishonoring Christ. More than that, you are dishonoring the Father, the God that made you. You are not submitting to the man. You are struggling there. Who is the greatest? You will not obey. If he speaks, you also speak. Our heads must both be open. We are in the same authority, but God said no. You are not in the same position. Cover your own. Cover your own before man. The no. So you see what it means? 
that woman you are refusing to submit your husband is to cry is to cry you are refusing that you are speaking back to the man is to cry you are doing that that you reject what the man tells you that is not against God. The man will come to God. God, I told my wife this and she says no. Which way was my word contrary to your will, O oh Lord? I checked well to ensure my words are not contradicting you. And I told my wife this and she rejected. That's what the man goes to tell God. Then whom are you rejecting? Whom are you dealing with? Whom are you rebelling against? You are rebelling against Jesus. Don't say it's the man that you are seeing with your eye. He that does not obey his, has her husband, whom she sees with her own eye. How, will, how can she obey Jesus whom she does not see? See it. But if you obey your husband, whom are you obeying? Cry. If you cover your head and get small in your own eyes before your husband, whom are you obeying? Cry. In Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians. I read chapter 5. Verse 22 to 24. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Can you see the position? God puts your husband unto you as Jesus. How do you say, I know I am going to heaven. I don't know whether you like it or not. And you are sinning against that man. Who will give you heaven? No heaven for you. Who will give it to you? No. Because the, Jesus put your husband in his position to you. As in his position to your husband. So also in his position to you. In the husband's position to you. And you reject. You reject Jesus. Because it says as unto the Lord. Your husband is the physical representative of Jesus. It's easy to test whether you're going to heaven or not. It's very cheap. Because you see an, a physical image, a physical person. What you do to that person determines where you will be. It determines where you will be. Your own is you can easily know. Mark your papers. Write the exam and mark your papers. You will know whether you wrote well or not. The answer should be given to you immediately. It's like they say, do the sum. Answer is at the, the, at the back page. When you do, go to the back page and see whether you got the answer. Your husband is the back page. Your character towards him Go to the back page quickly and see whether you got the answer. Whether you're qualified for heaven. That is very simple. Very simple. Then you say, but the man, the demand of the man is too strong. This man, hey, Kai, the demand, this man, you don't know how he's doing it. Jesus found the father like that. But how did he treat it? He said, Father, this cup is terrible for me. It's heavy for me. I will, I wish you should take away this cup from me. But what was his conclusion? Nevertheless, it's not my will, but thy will should be done. Learn it. Even Jesus suffered. He would have wished as a man not to accept some things the Father allowed to him. Especially going to the cross. 
It was strong for him. But see the submission. Not my will. But dying be done. So what are those things you are choosing your husband for? Are they the things that will kill you? Even as Jesus will die. And yet, he submitted. It is the will of the Father. What are those things you are complaining? Hey, this man is too hard. Hey, this man is like that. What are those things? Can you say them? What about man's submission to Christ? Is it easy? It was said of Peter. They wanted to kneel him for, for, in persecution. He was running away. He saw Jesus going back to where the, where the, the, the cross was. Said, Lord, where are you going? You refuse to be nailed. So I'm going back the second time. Oh, my Lord, it will not happen. I'm going to take it now. It's not easy. Have you seen the suffering of Paul? Have you seen the suffering of the apostles? Who withdraws? Who withdraws? Ye have seen the sufferings of the people the, and the patience of Job. You saw it. And of, the, uh, uh, and of the prophets. And their patience in their suffering. You will not be patient under your husband. Complain. Complain. You have no justification. Before God, you don't. Before Jesus, you will say, My father was hard. You didn't see that when I was on the cross, he turned his eyes away from me. You didn't see the darkness that came from him and covered, the, covered me on the, as I was on earth. Did I reject him? Did I reject obedience? Even to the obedience of death, the death of the cross. Most shameful obedience. Public obedience. I still submitted. Go and submit to your husband. Go. Haga, why are you in the wilderness? I'm running away from my mistress. Why? She was so hard for me. Why was she hard for you? Your character cost it. Your character cost it. Go back and submit your mail. Go back and submit to your mail. Your character. You were stubborn to her. You were despising her. Because you are pregnant, she's not. So you disdain her. You forgot that you were a male. Can pregnancy now give you leadership over her? You cause that trouble in your life. Woman, did you not cause the trouble in your life where your husband is having problem with you? Why life is difficult with you? He's handling you with iron hand. Are you not responsible? Is it not because you despise him? You disdain him. That's why he said... I will treat you strong with an iron heart. Because Sarah told Abraham, my sin be upon you. When I told you that you should marry another one, is my where did you agree? Eh? You knew it was because of my impatience. You knew clearly I was disturbing you. Marry, marry my mate. Marry my mate. Why did you not refuse? You knew it was a sin. Did God tell you that you should marry another person? Is it not me who told you? Why did you agree? Now, that sin, I've carried it and put on your head. This girl is giving me trouble here now. I'm going to handle her. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm going to handle her. She saw that she was pregnant, so she's despising me. She's downgrading me because of pregnancy. I would deal with her. What would Abraham say? Behold, your maid is in your hand. Is it not you who asked me to marry her? I have not belittled you because of her. If she has gone into doing that, give it to her. Let her come down. Let her submit to you. I'm not the reason for her pride. 
over you. So check it up. Why is this thing like that? Woman. Submission. As unto Christ. For the husband is the hate of the wife. Even as Christ is the hate of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Not you. I am the one buying food. I am the one buying clothes. I am the one buying this. Why are you the one? How did you get the money? It's because you refused to submit that money to your husband. To make your husband be the one to do this. Be the one to do this. You kept the money. Are you the savior of the family? I'm the one paying my school, children's school fees. From which money? Is it not the money you made in that house? Are you not one with your husband? It's because you kept the money. That's why you're calling your name over it. Did Jesus seek his glory? I seek not my own glory. Then why didn't you submit the money to your husband? Why didn't you do all those things in the name of your husband? Why not? Why are you calling it your money? Why don't you call it your husband's money? What I'm telling you, you refuse that, you will cover your head. My husband's head is bare. Mine too will be bare. I won't cover it. I am as he is. That's where the trouble is. On insubordination. Go and learn this. You will find peace and eternal life. You will find peace. Go and do this. The backsliding that is taking your husband away will stop. He will remove himself. He will come back. For Naomi had heard that the Lord had visited Israel. So she was going back to Bethlehem. Go! Let the Lord visit you now. And you change. You will see change in your husband. That is the word of God. We're talking about headship. Of course, the parents are leaders of their children. Heads over their children. That one is clear. Now, check it. I've talked about obedience and submission. Obedience and submission. The Christian family must recognize the headship of Christ and willingly submit to him, to obey him fully in all subjection. That how must recognize Jesus. That family must recognize Jesus and submit to him. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 27 to verse 28. Matthew 22, verse 27. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the First and great commandment. That family, the first thing required of that family is loving the Lord your God. With all your heart, God must take first place. Not the husband, not the wife, not the child, not the children. Thou shalt love the Lord your God. First commandment. First thing first. Woman. It is the Lord your God. Not your husband first. You will love him. But it's in the second commandment. It's in the second commandment. Man. You will love your, husband, your, your wife. But it is in the second commandment. Children. You will love your parents. But it is in the second commandment. Parents, you will cherish your children, but it is in the second commandment. The first is the Lord your God. If that family has Jesus at head, as headship, then love him with all your heart. With 
all your soul, with all your might, and with all your strength. Then, the first duty of a husband in the family is to direct the love of the, 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 children, I mean, the love of the wife and the children to God. That's the first duty of a husband. It is first. Not to yourself, but to God. Not to yourself, but to God. Not to your will, but to the will of God. Because he is your head. Jesus is your head. Jesus is God. Now, let love go to him. Don't block the ways of your world to love the Lord. Give her time to pray to God. It's one of the ways to love the Lord. Give her time to study the scripture and know of her God. It's one of the ways to love the Lord your God. Give her time to go to fellowship, to attend conferences in the love of God, in the sincere love of God. That is it. That's the first thing you should do. Give the money for transportation. Transport your children. For, is it education first? No, God first. Why are your children not serious in, in the house of God but busy in school? You are spending all to send them to school but when the house of God comes, you leave them at home. What about that? First thing first, love God. Direct them to the love of God. Wife, I have said God first before your husband. Adam, why, don't, why, why not God first? God says you should not eat of that fruit. But your wife is giving it to you. I say God first. Don't listen to your wife if it is contrary to God. Don't mind her crying. Otherwise, she will count her sin upon you as Sarah did. You, were you not the one that advised me? When you knew my advice was bad, where did you take it? When you knew my advice would lead you away from God, where did you take it? And, but you were crying. If I cry, will I not be tired? Eh? Will I not be tired? If I cried in your house for 24 hours, ignore my cry. Ignore my cry. Do what God tells you. But now you didn't do. You have become a problem in the house now. God first. Not your wife. Don't mind her cry. I will leave this house. You don't love me. Don't listen to that. God first. If she leaves, God will bring her back. Because God will be on your side. That's what I'm saying. That's what God wants you to know. First in that house. Then love your wife. Love is not divided. The way you love God will naturally come to your wife. But you give it first to God. It will flow back to your wife. You love God first. It will flow back to your husband. And it will flow pure. Because the love of God must be pure. It will flow fresh and pure on the children. You love God first. Yes, this, the Bible says, and the second, that is uh, in verse 39, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Then you can now go ahead on your wife. You can now go ahead on your children. You can now go ahead to love your husband when you have done the first duty. When you are connected with God, it will flow down. God is up. Man is down. Throw it up. It will fall on man. The way you love God, you will love your husband. You will love your children. As you throw up, the Lord will allow it to fall on the people. But God first. Yes. 
Since Jesus is willingly given his headship over the marriage and family, the man must not struggle headship with him. Don't struggle headship with Jesus. Leave your head open. Jesus is the head. Don't struggle glory with Jesus in your home, in your marriage. Your head, you are the glory of Jesus. Yes. Yeah. Don't. It is not the will. It is not the will of the husband, but the will of Jesus that should be done in that house. As the Lord has said to the Father, "Not my will, but thine." You also say to Jesus, "Not my will, but thine." The wife also says to the husband, not my will but thine. This is headship and submission. In marriage, for your peace, for your joy, for your blessing. Hence, all in the family must give first obedience to the Lord Jesus. Who is the rewarder of their soul? <laughs> what reward do you really have for your wife? Man that shall die as the, as the flower disappears in the burning heat, in the sunrise. What reward do you have? Can your reward cover her soul? That you want to remove her from Jesus, her Lord, her God, the rewarder. Can you give her eternal life? That you want to turn her eyes from Jesus. You want to remove her from the worship of Jesus. Can you give your wife eternal life? Can you even give her the peace of mind? Can you heal her body? Can you give her protection from Satan? Therefore, not your will, but the will of Jesus should be done. Jesus is the rewarder of the soul. He is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Allow your wife to seek him so that she can receive reward. Both earthly reward and eternal reward. Allow your wife to be to pay her tithe, it is to her master. To contribute to matters that concern the name of Jesus. Though you are to check her not to make sure she is not in excess against your, the family welfare too. That is there, but don't stop her. Don't stop her. Don't stop her from being kind. Don't stop her from being charitable. Don't threaten her until she's hiding it from you and it becomes sin to her. Or the devil takes her over in case she becomes afraid and is doing it in an ungodly way. Don't do that. Give her the liberty to be righteous, to be free. Let her not be ruled by fear. Give her chance. The wife and the children must not hesitate to give face obedience to Jesus who is greater than the man in the house and must be ready to deny the man submission and obedience in matters that the man contradicts Jesus. Yeah, the Lord made him the head. It's the Lord that made him the head. Why is he now trying to lead you against him that made him the head? Why? Then what's your security? If you are now obeying somebody that shall die. After he has died, where will he leave you? Where will he leave you? With whom will he leave you? If you abandon God and are going on him. My husband has said, I should not come to church. My husband has said, 
I should not go to holiness of our movement. My husband has said, I should not leave Catholic Church. My husband has said, when he dies, where will you be? That you are leaving the eternal for the temporal. You are leaving the everlasting God for a short term man. You can't stand, deny him obedience in matter that contradicts the will of God, the word of God, the commandment of the Father. In the book of Acts of Apostles, chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, verse 7, and verse 8, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power? Oh, by what name have you done this? Then Peter filled with the Holy Ghost. And said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if, ye, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the important man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him that this man stand here before you. Oh, this is the stone that was set at naught of your builder, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among me, whereby we must be saved. <laughs> now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Why are you afraid of your husband? When he's challenging you on matters of God. When he's challenging you on matters of hearing. Matters of ungodly hairdo. That he likes it so. When he's telling you you should dress in pants and trousers. In slacks. And go out with him that he likes it so. You should dress in short. Where are you silent before that man that shall die any moment? That the man is talking as if he is greater than God. Why are you not bold? Why are you afraid? Why are you hiding from him the truth? Open your mouth, you happy father. Let the man know. If he rejects Jesus, it's not you. <laughs> It's marriage that brought you together and the marriage can stop at any time. The marriage can stop that day because when the, the, this man, the prince of, uh, the king of Babylon, Belshazzar, was telling Daniel, if you interpret this writing for me, I will make you the second ruler, the third ruler, is it third ruler or second ruler? The third ruler in the kingdom. And you will be like this, you will be like that. Daniel said, let your gift stay with you. That night, the kingdom was removed from him. The man died. What can your husband do? How long is he living that you want to die because of him? You want to give up Jesus? How long will that man live? A while they say, oh, your husband went to home. Oh, uh, the, the accident happened. Oh, your husband, oh, sickness came. And uh, oh, oh, your husband. Is it the one you're giving up heaven for? Is it the one you are afraid to speak about Jesus to? See the disciples here. You are asking me by what means I heal these people. We heal these people by Jesus. By Jesus. Whom you crucify. And I'm telling you there's no other name given under heaven. That man should be saved except Jesus. Hey. They were shivering inside them. These people are born. Oh, they had been with Jesus. We know Jesus. <laughs> Jesus was a bold man. The Lord is helping us to train bold and courageous people. 
bold and courageous wives that will stand for righteousness and ignore the power of man. Yeah. Now, the, the, in verse 17 to 20, but that it spread no further among the people. Let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, Josh, hey! Join them and let's say verse 20 together. One, two, go. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Why is the threat? Your husband is threatening you and you're, he, 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 he said, I will not do like that again. Or I won't pay your school fees, the child. And you are bothering on those things. Must you go to school before you go to heaven? Must you marry that man before you go to heaven? Have you not seen many people that have come out successfully from bondage of marriage and are making it to heaven? There are many even prefer to stay on marriage. The widow, Anna, stayed unmarried until she was 84. She married only for seven years. 84 minus 7. 77 years she stayed alone. And she embraced Jesus. You don't want to embrace Jesus in heaven? That you're so afraid of marriage. Eh, if they cast me out, please know God well. So that you won't think marriage is anything. And what will I do with my children? Is that so? Is that so? Jesus said, if anyone will come to me and does not forsake himself, herself, her husband, her children, her property, her money, she is not fit to be my disciple. Come! Can your husband really have power to send you out? The Lord said, the very hair of your head is numbered. None shall fall to the ground, except the Lord allows it. Except the Lord counts it a blessing to you to stay. Come out of that for me. Nothing will happen to you. Nothing! Hey. I remember I was, oh, when this one happened like that, I went this way. I committed adultery with somebody. Hey, the massacre, it will never happen. You can't stay in this house again. Hey, 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 hey. The man took a knife and took her to the bedroom. Say your last thing. I'm, I will strike you now. The woman closed her eyes. Remember, I owe uh, mommy, mama, Jemima. <laughs> I owe her this amount. Remember to pay her. The, okay, remember this one. Remember, this man was holding the knife. So I have finished. <laughs> the man threw the knife, down, the knife away and started crying. Oh! <laughs> Until now, she has joined the woman in the faith. How do you want to convert the man? You are not ready to stand to suffer. Huh? Little threat like this you are giving out. Is it not threat? Let's threaten the people. They have no power to kill them because there is a higher government. They, they are under a government. They will credit them. They have no power. But let's threaten them. There is God. Your husband cannot go beyond God. Even the natural government in the society, he cannot go beyond it. So why are you full of fear? So, that is what you should understand. Yeah. In Acts chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. Acts chapter 5, verse 28. 
brought, let's start from 27. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Perfect. Anything your husband demands that is outside God, don't give him that obedience. Otherwise, you will, God will judge you. You will have evil reward from God. He's a rewarder. You will go and explain to him why you embarrassed him. Why you lifted up your husband above him, the creator. You will go and answer. Why you decided to make your husband an, an idol. To be worshipping him. He will ask you why. Why you were not able to stand for Jesus. The Lord will ask you why. And he will suffer you in this life. You have gotten your husband. He shall come out of your nose. You think it's a job? He that laid his hand to the plow and looked back is not fit for the kingdom. It's not. Respect headship. Train your husband to respect headship. He should respect Jesus. The hate over him. Respect Jesus. He is the head over you. The three Hebrew children said to Nebuchadnezzar, Okay, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. Normally we shouldn't speak hard. We should be soft before the king. We should be kneeling down before the king. We should be, oh, answering my king. My lord, yes, my lord. Oh, oh. we should be gentle before the king. But you are coming in matters against our God. <laughs> we're not careful in this matter. It's not a sin to speak. This one was speaking to you with all strength. With all boldness. We will not serve your God, O King. If you want to kill us, to throw us into the fire, go ahead, but our God will deliver us. If he chooses that we should die, go ahead. We will not obey to serve your idol. To worship your image. Why don't you tell that man so that exalts marriage above life? I will drive you out of this house. Why are you afraid? What is marriage? Is it the best thing women are enjoying now outside Christ? What glory do they have? Go and ask many women. They wish they stayed out of marriage to serve Jesus. Then why is the problem that the man is using more marriage to boss? You'd behave as if you are an orphan. No God anywhere. You are a sinner. Having no God in this life. If you have God, he is sending you to him. And God loves that type of challenge. He will pick you up if you stand righteous and shame that man. He will not abandon you. When my father and my mother forsake me, thou will take me over. If when my husband forsake me for your righteousness... Thou will take me over. That's what we need to understand. Yeah. The headship of the man over his wife and the family must be recognized and willingly submitted to and obeyed. Hence, the woman must obey the husband in all things. That do not contradict obedience to Jesus. Submission to her husband must be as unto Christ. As unto Christ. Will you speak roughly to Jesus? Will you slap Jesus? Will you spit upon Jesus? Will you pour water on Jesus? If Jesus were lying down, sleeping, will you come and look at him narrowly and say, mm, on Jesus? Why are you doing it to your husband? Will you deny Jesus food? Then why are you doing it to your husband? 
Will you carry Jesus to the people, to the world, and crucify him? You see him, he's saying he is Lord. I leave him alone. Live that like Jesus. Are you going to speak evil of Jesus? Why are you doing so of your husband? Hey, I laugh again. Let me tell you one kind of woman. Women gathered together and were criticizing their husband. This one will bring her husband. Ma, mm, mm. we're just managing in the house of Ma. This one will bring this. Ma, her husband was very good to her. She was among these people. What will I do now? If I tell them my husband is good to me, they will say, eh, so I am enjoying. So, eh, they will be envying me. So she joined them. Man, I... I'm telling you. They are not ready to give glory to God for, for what the husband is doing for her. She must join a crowd because she was sitting among demons. What took you there? Why are you among wayward women? To the point that they are making you express calling good, evil. They are making you go to him that call it good, evil. That the Lord shot you good, gave you a good husband, gave you a good wife, just because you must speak. You begin to speak foolishly. Hmm. Righteous husband. Hey, this is your house. In fact, I want to go. Me, this is your house. Come. Is that gratitude to God for what he did for you? You prayed and the Lord gave you a husband. You want to disdain him. You want to embarrass him. I said, don't follow the customs of this life. Hmm. Somebody asked me a question some few days ago. When a man was speaking that in my, my wife is saying, hey, she, I don't love her. I don't do this, this. I am like this to her. And in fact, I have, that I've never bought cloth for her. And then another brother sat there and asked me, sir, is it that women are programmed like this? <laughs> do you understand what he's saying? Because his wife is also doing her own there. And he's coming to hear another man saying the woman is doing his own. So is it that women are programmed? They, God, the way God made women is that they can never say good things, satisfy. Oh, my husband is wonderful. My husband is good. Is it that they cannot say it by their nature? That's the one. Stop that type of complaint. Otherwise, the Lord say, as you have said, so I have. Is those type of murmurings of the children of Israel that deprive them from the promised land. Stop that. Appreciate for what is the Lord is doing. Both men and women, learn to appreciate one another. Say it out. Why you regret? I regret marrying you. Is that in the house of God? Is it the man you gave testimony to? To God for? To people? That you are now expressing regret. What come? What are those things that the man has done that is making you to regret now? Can you count them? Or one thing, just one thing that has destroyed the rest. Is the man not perfecting, perfecting holiness? Is the man not learning more in Christ? Let's stop that thing that spoils the marriage, that makes, provokes people to anger. Stop those type of things. Speak good. Let your words be good to a defying that they may minister to the hearer. Minister grace to the hearer. That's what God wants you to know. Hence, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 22, or chapter 5, verse 22 to 24, the Bible tells us, Ephesians chapter 5, 
22 to 24. We have read it, but let's go. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Take note of that. In everything. Don't say you have tried. I said do it all. Do it all in everything as you are into Christ. The Lord expects us to obey all his commandments. The Lord expects the wife to obey all the commandments of her husband. Everything. That is it. In the book of First Peter, chapter 3, verse 5 to verse 7. First Peter chapter 3. The Bible tells us from verse 5 it goes. For after this manner in the old time the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husband. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham calling him Lord whose daughters Ye are as long as ye do well and not afraid with any amazement. Sarah called Abraham Lord. Sarah called Abraham Lord. Sarah called Abraham Lord. That shows the degree of honor she had for her husband. It shows the degree of humility she exercised to her husband. Not just calling, her heart shut it. Because even when the husband said, don't say you're my wife. Say you're my sister. She still obeyed. Who showed that they really, they, this lady still really, really humble for that man. Was respected that man. Upgraded that man. But we have said not unto sin. In your own case, but exercise this degree of honor. This degree of respect. Exercise it. Exercise it in your weights. Exercise it in your action. That's what God expects of you. That's what God demands of you. Cover your head. Don't be proud. Don't say you're equal with him. Whatever is your degree of education. Whatever is your degree of work and money. Money attainment. Cover your head. Don't allow your head bare as the man. Don't. That's what the Lord is telling you. That's what God wants you to understand. Yeah. Understand this. Practice this. Do this. Do it. And children too should be obedient and submissive to their father. This is their duty. The wife must not accept undue authority of the husband over her, which will lead her to sin and rebellion against Christ, their supreme head. She must resist this unto suppression. The wife must not usurp the authority of the husband in the womb, which thing God forbids. Don't usurp the authority of your husband. God forbids that. It's a sin. Don't fold your husband down and sit up. That's why we told you marry a believer. The unbelieving woman will want to fold you down. But using natural powers and unnatural powers to fall you down and rule you. She becomes the one that says, go, you go. Come, you come. It's reversed. But it's a sin to any Christian, any Christian woman, to do so to her husband. To turn her husband onto her and 
unto a common thing and be treating the husband as boy, boy in the marriage. In the, in the book of First Timothy, chapter 2, I read verse 12 and verse 13, verse 12 to 14. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not, in, was not deceived. But the woman, being deceived, was in the transgression. The woman was, she forwarded herself. Satan knew she wouldn't have made it to Adam. That's why he, he went to the woman. Why did you forward yourself? You are now the one in family, on the top of family affairs. Your husband is following you. That family will crumble. God didn't give it to you. The powers, even devils respect, they know this. The respect of man is in Satan. Because it is the ordination of God. God ordained it so. Woman, live way for your husband. Don't belittle his understanding. Because he's gentle and quiet. You're not the one making noise. He's silent under that man. Listen to him. I listen to my father. I hear from my father. What I hear from my father, I declare unto you. But you're full of talks. You will never hear. You're usurping authority. I'm telling you so that you go to heaven. Because this heaven, the door is, the way is narrow. And many women in this demonic age, 